Right, we're here with another Raw Strength interrogation and today I'm with Lee Imulek who plays prop for Sail Sharks and he's played international level with England at 16s, 18s and 20s. So thanks for doing this mate. Uh, so firstly, the first question, we're going to jump straight in. Uh, for young rugby players who want to play at a high level or even go professional, how important is their strength and conditioning? Strength and conditioning in the modern in the modern day game of rugby is is very important. Um, you know the game's getting faster. You know the players are getting bigger, stronger. So you, you know you've got to be in that. You've got to be able to to cope with the with the impact um, that the that the that the game you know offers. Uh, you know maybe in the olden days it wasn't so much about conditioning. You know with your typical prop being about you know thirty stone yeah. um, and just doing one job. Whereas nowadays. You know, it's front row, especially if my position of a, a, a lack of back row. Um, you've got, you know, you've got backs that are benching 160. You know, that's that's more than some of the some of the second rows and the back rows as well. Yeah. So everyone's sort of on a level playing field. So, so muscle size is as important as strength for the M impact. Muscle size is important, yeah, but a lot of it is functional. Yeah. Uh, functional stuff that you know you see these bodybuilders that. Are, you know, absolutely massive, but you look at them and they can't move. Yeah. Um, so, you know, size isn't a massive issue. Um, it, it, it depends how, how strong you are, really. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of if there's a player who's really good, but he's small, and there's a player who's not that good, but he's big, what do you think is more important? I think if I think playing the same position. Yeah, I think, I think at a young level, um, it will be skill. Yeah. I think because. It's a lot easier to get you bigger than, and you know, than than, than teach the skill. Yeah. You know, so and people develop at different rates. You know, I know boys that were were massive. Were like well, myself, I was I was a big ladder when I was younger. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of people started to then sort of overtake me and catch me up. So yeah. everyone develops at different at different rates. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so what's the biggest mistake that you see young players make with their training? Biggest mistake will probably be beach weights. Beach weights. Yeah. A lot of um, a lot of curls, a lot of bicep curls, a lot of shoulders, and you know the sort of stuff you see in men's health magazines. Yeah, which you try to. Uh, and they and they put out recently the Lee Halfpenny workout. I don't know if you yeah. saw that one. No. And that was literally just curls and benches. Was it? And, yeah. Which was I it? doubt is anything like. No, I mean, you know, I think you say it's, it's all right to do the beach weights. You know, when the, when the summertime comes, and but you you know a lot of it is you are be doing functional. A lot of stuff we do at sale is functional weights. Yeah. Um, you know, so we'll do a lot of core stability work within the weights. So a lot of one arm bench press. Yeah. You know, to keep the core so it's done. Um, a lot of single arm shoulder press. Um, you know, front squats. We'll, it's all got to be it's all got to be functional. We very rarely do bicep curls. And what sort of reps or time and attention do you do for the for the core? Um, we'll, we'll we'll do you know, in, in season, like what? You in think? season, we'll 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 sort of depending on what phase, because we have different phases through the season. You see, we'll yeah. say like, well, this month, this season, this phase, we need to get a bit bigger. This phase, we'll just you know keep just to maintain the size. Yeah. Um. So usually six, we work on about six to to twelve reps. Yeah. And just focusing on doing it properly rather than lifting loads of weight or yeah yeah I mean it's obviously important to get a bit of the get the weight on the bar but yeah, yeah you know sort of a lot of people when they bench press they put a lot of a lot of weight onto the bar but when they're doing shoulders they do, you know they try and stack as much as yeah. much as they can but they don't get good posture yeah you know sort of scaps back shoulders back shoulder and scaps down um, and it really helps with the um, with your shoulder stability as well, it stops it stops a lot of injuries. We've noticed this year at Sale particularly that, you know, just by doing that sort of setting your scaps before you lift, yeah. you know, this it's cut the injury dramatically. Yeah, and working those muscles like in and the warm up yeah. and stuff. As yeah, well. it's, it's the, you know it's the little muscles that you can't see that are the most important. Yeah, so if you, if the the big thing that the lot of strength coaches say and all the books say is train the movements, not the muscles. So I think you agree with that. Yeah. So if we're gonna do if you want to get bigger, just get your bench press better technique mm -hmm. with more weight on, and then work the muscles around it yep. to help with injury prevention yep. and things like that, rather yep. than just doing 20 reps with as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. I mean a lot of it, you know, is core stability as well. If your core strong, it makes your extremities strong. Yeah. You know your arms. Um, 
you know, I've been doing a lot of a lot of core work recently and a couple of the boys that you know that I play with as well have been doing a lot of core work and you know, you see better results with your bench press, with your squat, because everything's going through everything, you know, comes through your core. Power transfer. Yeah, your power transfer comes yeah. through your core, so therefore, you know, you're gonna be lifting bigger and you're gonna be you're gonna be more stable and safer. Yeah. Less chance of injury. Cool. Right, so don't train like a bodybuilder. Don't train like a bodybuilder. Cool. Yeah. Um next one. What things you should suggest to help a young amateur player make the jump to going pro? So not just to a high level, but mm -hmm. actually going professional now. Yeah. And let's say like sixteen year old. Um, you know, a lot of it is is the right place at the right time. Yeah. Well, um, what can you, you do know, to people maximize it? You know, maximum to maximize it. You you know you want to be looking at, at your fitness, your fitness levels. You want to be looking at your skills, you want to be concentrating on your skills work. Because um, like I said before, you know, your skills can be, your skills can't really, they can be taught to an, to an extent, but if you've got that natural ability and natural flair, you know, it's going to be, it's yeah. going to be better at a younger age, because then once, you, once your body develops properly, when you get a bit older, that's when you can start, you know, putting on the size. Yeah. Um, nutrition, you know, nutrition is, uh, is an important part, you need to get your energy, you know, you need to rest up. Um, you know, 16 is a difficult age. Uh, you know, your mates are all as a man. Right? Yeah, as a man, your mates are all going out and stuff, and it. and it is difficult. But you know, you've got to make sacrifices. It's only you know, you've only got one shot, and you know, it's it's a short-lived career as well. Probably. Yeah. It is a very short-lived career, so you know, you've got to um, you've got to make the most of it. Yeah. Um, so, with nutrition, um, do you think they should go out and like? buy books or get a nutrition coach or what what did you do in that situation? Uh, what I did was I looked the internet the internet is a great tool. There's a lot a, a lot so of also information. Can be misleading, it also can be misleading, yeah, but I mean if you've not got the you know the the ways of getting a nutritional coach, you know, I money or you've not got the contacts in it, then it's difficult. You know, you've got to go out there and just sort of work out what what's right for you. Yeah. Really, I yeah. mean, the principles are it. You know, I'm I'm trying to put on more muscle at the moment, but keep my body fat down. So it's, you know, eat, eat sort of every two hours, um, after training, before training, after training, sort of within the hour window. Yeah. Take on some carbs, um, but after that, if I'm not training, so at night time, then don't take the carbs because obviously we're not burning it off. So yeah. it just it was it was uh, so it's fast the timing of the carbs is important. The timing of the carbs is important because yeah. of the um, you know spikes and some spikes and stuff. Yeah. Um, but no, just just look on the internet, talk to various people. It's it's one of them things you've got to research it and you know find out what like I say what's right for you. And did, when you were like making that transition to playing at a high level, did did you like hang around with other guys who were trying to do the same thing or? Yeah, yeah, we used to, you know, I'm quite fortunate there was, um, there's four of us from, from Sandbox where I live and where I played that went, that played at South Sharks. Yeah. And um, well, there was five and I was a younger lad that just came, so, you know, we used to sort of sit down and we used to share stuff, you know, or what are you doing here, what are you eating here? So, um, we yeah, yeah, trained together as well. We, yeah, we did, we trained together, we trained yeah, at local good. gyms together and, you know, we used to share each other's programs and... Yeah. Because I've heard that you, your success is the average of the five people that you hang out with the most. Mm -hmm. So if you try and hang out with five other people who have the same goals, same beliefs, then you're going to make better progress than if you hang out with just five guys who want to get drunk and mm -hmm. chase girls all the time. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, I've got my friends, I've got my work friends, yeah. and I've got my friends from home. Yeah. Um, you, you know, but it's, 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 it's a, it, it all depends on the person, how much do you want it, you know, you can you can hang about with the five right people, but if you don't want to, you know, if you'd rather go and have a few beers and, you know, see see women, and yeah. then, you know, you're not, you're not going to make most, the most of, of what you, yeah. you want to be. Um, and what do you do for recovery? What do you do now and what, what's changed since when you were younger? Um, Did you even do anything when you were younger? No, I mean, when I was younger, looking back, it was, it was stupid. I used to play Saturday, Sunday, um, and then sometimes I'd have a game for college on a Wednesday. Yeah. You know, and, and looking back now, you, your body just your body can't recover. Um, but the recovery, the recovery we do now is you know a lot of contrast bathing, uh, you know the ice baths, 
and then ice baths for a minute and then hot shower for a minute and yeah. then you know keep keep doing that and um, we get massages from the physios you know we're pretty lucky that we get massages and stuff yeah um and a lot of it is is in the nutrition as well you know it's getting in the protein and recovery shakes yeah um it's resting up you know taking care if you have got a little injury you know icing it and going going through the right procedure yeah um because you don't want it, you don't want it to flare up again yeah. so um you, even if you can't afford a, a masseuse at a young age as well you can get foam rollers and balls like like a cricket ball yeah. and just roll on them yeah. as well and just yeah, do it yourself we, we do a lot of foam rolling yeah um you know this this certain there's a lot of stuff on the internet that you know promotes foam roller um i think they've just done some new studies on it that yeah. you know that shows it's really good breaking down the tissues and stuff yeah um and the flashes and it's nice it, it definitely helps it does definitely help foam roller yeah, you know, and it's, it's easy to do it in front of the TV before you go to bed. You yeah. can do it in the morning. You know, it doesn't cost a lot to buy a foam roller, and it does make you feel better straight away. Yeah. I find yeah. as well. Yeah. And especially in a sport that is collision based, mm -hmm. you're gonna have scar tissue. And if you haven't done foam rolling before, but you've played for ten years, there's yeah. gonna be some tender spots yeah. in your body. You just yeah. have to yeah. find them, don't you? Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, so, what are your goals, and how how do you set your goals? Um. My, my goals this year are to put on more muscle. Um, I lost a lot of I lost a lot, a lot of fat at the start of the season, yeah. um, and I came in a bit came in a bit light. So I'm sort of starting from starting from breaking my way up from the bottom again. Um, but, but healthier, man. But healthier, yeah. Just living a healthier lifestyle, you know. So like I say, trying to get the muscle on eating every two hours, um, eating the carbs around training, getting a lot of protein on. Um, and you know, just just generally looking looking after my body. I find you know people say, "Oh, let's get oil. Let's get all these supplements," and they get as many supplements as they can and they take them, and they still eat pizzas and yeah. Chinese and curries, and they, they think, "Oh, it's not working. Supplements are rubbish." Yeah. You know, people don't realise that they're there to supplement a healthy diet. Yeah. You know, that's why they call supplements. So, um, you know, I found changing my diet dramatically helped dramatically helps but going back to you know changing uh, what um, how to set my goals we've got a a psychologist yeah. at sale you know we're fortunate enough to, to have one cool um, and we just sit down and we talk about you know what aims we want for the year so long uh, so we've got long term medium term short term goals so yeah. what do we want for the season um, you know what do we want over the, for our, our careers yeah and we'll just sit down and, and we'll we'll have targets. You know, if you've got something to aim at, you you, you know, generally you you'll hit it and you'll yeah. stick at it. Yeah. So do you have like diet, training, and competition goals? Um, or is it more just competition based? We've well, we've got we've got competition based goals as a as a team. Um, you know, I've got my individual goals regarding strength and conditioning, um, and also you know playing, getting into the team, and skills. Yeah. You know, so. I want to play a certain amount of games this season. Um, strength conditioning. I want to put the size on, or you know, it could be by the end of the year. I want to get this body fat percentage yeah. or millimeters we use. And and do you just do you just have those goals in your mind, or do you actually write them down, or are they on the computer, or no, we, we write them down. Yeah, I mean they're always in the back of your mind as well, but we write them down just to make sure. And are they in the gym or in the changing room? No, we, I've, I've got mine on the notice board in the kitchen. Yeah. So you see him every day. I see him every day. Cool. Yeah. Man. Right. So we'll move on again. Um, what do you do on a game day to get your mind ready and focused for battle? Um, well, it, it starts really sort of the week, the week leading up to the game. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll play sort of Friday night, and then we'll come back in on the Monday. We'll review what we've done um, from the previous game, and then we'll, we'll the, the Tuesday we'll then look at how we're at the opposition. Um, we've got computers at sale where we sit down and we analyse the analyse the games. Like the stats and stuff. Yeah, the stats. Um, they've also got, you know, it's all it's all coded so you can see, say we're playing Worcester Warriors, we've got Worcester Scrum, Worcester Scrum Attack, Worcester's Line Out, Line Out Attack, you know, Ball in Play. Um, so we can really analyse them in depth. Um, and then, from there really it's you know two days before the game you start getting your hydration you start hydrating ready ready for the game then 
game day, well, previous to game day, that you know, that before you go to bed early and get your bag ready and okay, relax. You know, it's just just relaxing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, everybody's different. You know, some people like calming music. Some people like you know really blaring music. Some people don't like anything. You know, some like to go for a coffee in the afternoon with the lads, some like to sit at home and do nothing. You know, I know a, I knew a, a player that used to get up at, say, he used to get up at one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, stay in bed all morning. Yeah. You know, and that's just how we prepared. Work for him. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's different. It's just, it's trying to work out what's what's right for you. <clears throat> and what about immediately before? Do you do anything different? Or just... Um, no, not, not particularly. Some boys have got superstitions, you know, they like to put the left boot on before the right boot and yeah. they like to become last off the bus. Um, for me, no, I just listen to a bit of music and, you know, just, just, try and, just try and relax, really. And then, so you'd rather stay relaxed than get psyched up? You know, there's a, there's a time, you, I think, in the olden days, you just got all het up about it, you yeah. know, when you were younger and stuff. But nowadays, it's, it's a lot more, you know, you need a clear mind because you need to be able to think, you know, it's yeah. a lot more... Um, tactics based nowadays would be. Well, you, you hear a lot about adrenal fatigue and if you go and you know two or three wake sessions getting angry and aggressive mm. and then lift and, and then get angry and aggressive in contact and training yeah. and then taking it to the next level on a Saturday yeah. then you're just going to burn out your mind and your emotions mm. and you need to stay relaxed so when you do take it to the next level you've got a next level yeah. if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's quite an important thing, and oh, just definitely. stay relaxed. Yeah, yeah it, it depends what type of person you are. Yeah, a lot of it. Find out what works. Find out what you. works. Yeah, I think yeah. A, a lot of it. You know, everybody's different in sport. Regarding the conditioning, a lot of people, you know, work best with different things. Same with nutrition. Yeah. You know, some boys like to do, um, some boys like to do seven days healthy in one day off. Some will just eat, you know, healthy food all the time. Some boys who've got you know really good metabolisms will just yeah came the job all the time <laughs> so it, it, yeah everyone's different yeah cool man um, <clears throat> so what exercises do you use the most when building strength is your goal and what specific workouts do you find work best um, we do a lot of like I said before you know we do a lot of squats um, we do a lot of shoulders any type shoulder of squat so. we don't do back squat. You know, it's it's quite bad for the for, for your back. A lot, of, a lot of you know, especially in the front row as well. But you know, we're constantly pounding it. Um, gives the back a, a break. Yeah, it the gives squat. the back a break, and it works your core better as well. Yeah, the front squat. Yeah, you know, you've got to um, you really you really it's, it's an hard it's an hard exercise to do, but it's really you get some good benefits from it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do a lot of that. We do a lot of uh, I say shoulder work, scat work, backs. You know, do a lot of back, so one arm dumbbell rows. Yeah. Um, you know the TRX machines. Yeah. Yeah, we do a lot of uh, wall slides with the TRX. Um, like instability stuff. Yeah, yeah, do a lot of that. I mean, previous to weights, we do a lot of um, prehab as well. You know, just. But in get, terms of getting really, really strong, what are the big exercises that you use apart from front squats? We use um, hand cleans. Yeah. do a lot of power lifting stuff as well you know I, I went through a mass gain a session um, a few months ago and it, it, a lot of it was you do two reps you have five seconds rest three reps five seconds rest and then five reps five seconds rest and they do so you, you start off with that once and then you'll do two loops and then you'll do three loops um, and you go with, the, with the same weight every with time, the same weight. rest pause. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And was that just with hand cleans or with everything? No, that was um, we did on that. It was bench press, yeah. um, single arm kettlebell shoulder press. Um, we did uh, like a, a complex, so like a you know like a uh, barbell bent over row to a hand clean to a front squat. Yeah. Yeah, we press, do those quite a bit in the gym. To a back squat. The the. I went through, I had two guys and we did a four week cycle of doing complexes as a warm up, but mm -hmm. they're not a warm up, are they? Yeah. Uh, and then just basic strength stuff and then 20 rep squats at the end, high rep squats. Yeah. And they both put on like three or four kilograms. Yeah, well, it was just was, insane. Yeah, well the session that we, that's pretty much the session we did. Yeah. So we finish off, we do all that stuff and then we'd be a little bit harder than that. And then we'd finish off with um, 
you know, two sets of thirty squats, yeah, uh, or a set of fifty on a, a set of fifty squats on a on a certain weight, yeah. and then a set of thirty on another weight. Wow. So it's a lot. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot. lot. But no, like I say, you know, it's eating well as, and and all, and you know, I'm I'm on some good some good supplements. You know, we we get some good supplements from sale. Yeah. So they are legal. They are, they are legal <laughs> supplements. Um, and it's and yeah, I put on sort of three or four kilos doing that. In how long? In probably a month. That's good. Probably a month. For, for an advanced athlete yeah. as well, that is good. Probably a month, yeah. yeah. But that's, you know, really smashing the weights. That's weights every, well, every other day. You know, but you're just constantly hammering. And I mean, it is, it is a painful process. Yeah. A lot of people think, oh, you know, it's, it's too hard, I can't do it. But it is, you know, you've got that's to work that takes. little bit. You've got to work that little bit extra to, you know, to get the size. Yeah. And how do you split it? Do you do whole body workouts or upper then lower? A lot of it, you know, it's like I said, it's not left down to me. Professional sport, we're yeah. lucky, we're lucky enough to to have people like you to to you know to coach us. Yeah. So we've got good strength and conditioner, you know, we plans it all out. But we, you know, sometimes we'll depending on the training week. You know, if we've got a big week where we're running, doing a lot of contact stuff, then we'll just do a bit of we'll just do upper body. Yeah. You know, if sort of start of the week, you know, boys. We'll, we'll do the lower body and then towards the end of the week we'll taper off you know so that we're fresh for the weekend yeah i mean we, yeah we do a lot we do some full body stuff as well um if we've had a week off then you know we'll have a full body blowout and well they're just just hammer us yeah well that's pretty much the next question how does your training change from off season to, to in season off season is a lot of you know a lot about getting the size on because yeah. you, you lose it during the season when you're playing and how long, every day. How long do you get for the off season? We get four weeks off. So we get four, we get four weeks off, two weeks to do nothing, and then two weeks just gradually, you know, building up, doing little bits of weights, little bits of um, of running, just yeah. to great. So you're not, you know, you're not starting, starting cold. And do you find that you put put weight on in those four weeks because you are taking time off? Me I don't, I don't mean that. No, I mean. me particularly, I. Um, you know, if I don't watch what I eat, I can put fat on quite very, very easily. Yeah. You know, all the boys lose weight. You know, lose a lot of a lot of muscle and a lot of fat quite easily. Um, so yeah, for me personally, I, I put weight on, so I have to watch what I, watch what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but we get four weeks off, and then we'll train for sort of three or four weeks, and then we get two weeks. Then we get a week off, and then another three or four weeks, and then a week off again. Yeah. So all together, we'll get we'll get the six. Is it like six days a week in the off season? Or five. At least five days a week. Yeah. Five days a week we usually do. Yeah. Cool man. And then in season, how's that changed? In season, you know, training sort of full days Monday Tuesday, so it's uh, you know so nine to five job Monday Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday off, and then we'll do sort of if we're playing Friday, we'll do a bit of team run on Thursday night. Yeah. And then play Friday. So in, in terms Saturday. of in terms of like the, the rugby side of it, not the strength training, that's pretty much full on all the time. Mm -hmm. But then your strength stuff is like almost twice as much in the off season. Would you say that's fair enough? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, we don't we don't really do. We, I mean, we we'll have skills in the off season. Yeah. Um, in what pre season we call it pre season. We'll have we'll have skills, but a lot of it is running and fitness. You know, it's just getting getting yourself ready and physically fit for that for that next level yeah. for like that season. Is it, what I'm trying to get across is that uh, in season young guys train the, the bodybuilding stuff they shouldn't be doing anyway mm -hmm. as we just said yeah. but they do it too much and their off season and in season program is almost the same mm -hmm. so they'll see like a six week muscle burn program and they'll try and do it in season with three rugby sessions and mm -hmm. one or two matches per week. Yeah. And you're just not going to get better that no, way. So no, I mean your body needs <coughs> your body needs time to rest. Yeah, you know it's all about working it, breaking down the tissues, and then and then you know rebuilding them again just to get the size. So I'd say you know rest is probably the most important. I mean I don't do weights every day. Yeah, you know the only phase at the moment is two weight sessions a day, morning lift and a, um, and an afternoon lift, and then a day off the next day. And just they just short sessions all day. Um, yeah, they sort of in the mornings it'll be be sort of two exercises to each sort of set yeah um, and then it'll be there'll be three sets and it'll be super set sorry and it'll be uh, four sets of six in the morning and then two sets of 12 in the afternoon yeah you know but I mean at the moment I'm I'm not playing so 
you know, I'm able to get these big weight sessions in, whereas the boys who are playing, so they can get a couple in during the week, and then they've got, you know, they've got a rest up for the games at the weekend. Yeah. So it is very different off season, and and, and to to in season, it's very different. It's all about maintaining it in the in the season. Yeah. And in terms of, we've obviously got the strength side, and then you've got the endurance sprint interval training side, right. and the rugby. So we have like two separate parts. Yeah. In terms of bridging the gap. I always tell my guys that the power exercises, so the sprints and the sled push, sled drags, yeah. and you know medicine ball work. That's how you get the strength into like game speed and aggression. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you agree with that? Yeah. It's and, and what do you do in terms of power exercises? You have like well, just exactly like you said. Then we do a lot of sled pushes, sled pulls. Um, do you have a prowler there? We have prowlers. Yeah, yeah. we have prowlers there. Um, we do a lot of hand cleans. You know, it's, uh, narrow grip snatches. Um, because rugby, rugby is a power. It's a power game. You know, it's yeah. a power contact sport. Um, you know, it's very well if you just, you know, lifting, lifting the heavy weights and. You, you can know, be doing, slow as well if you do that. Yeah, you can be slow, but I mean, it's very well doing that if you're, you know, looking just to get big and and not use it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But with a rugby and it's and it, with it being a power sport, you have to use that and it has to be game relevant has to be ready for the ready for the weekend you know there's no point in doing it if it's not going to benefit you on a rugby field yeah um cool i've got nothing else to say yeah cool do power work um and we've gone on recovery stuff so that's all my questions what i was thinking was in terms of a prop if we went specific what type of neck exercises do you do or do you do any sort of stuff yeah, yeah. to get ready for a scrum yeah, we do. Um, we've got an excellent machine. Um, literally, just stack the weight on and just and just go through the movements. Uh, we've got um, neck harnesses that you can strap the weight onto. Um, there's one way you can do it where you twist in your head. Um, one over the you know the back extensions. Yeah. You know you get into a back extension and you hold and you hold your head there and it's just keeping in that solid position. Right, so the do, whole of the back's tensing yeah, up. Yeah, so the whole of the back's tensing up. That's painful. Yeah, it is, it's pretty hard. We do, um, you know, trap work as well to keep the keep the muscles around the neck sort of stable. Yeah. And we'll do a lot of um, a lot of stability for the for the smaller muscles. You know, in the, you can have a massive neck, but it can be you know pretty useless. So like chin tucks and. Yeah, chin tucks. You know, you sort of lying on your back and you're just lifting, raising your head off the floor. Um, a lot of it squeezing on on med balls. Yeah. You know, actually, actually getting your neck into a, into a, into a strong position, into an, into the right position. Yeah. Um, you know, like I say, it's, with everything, injury management is all about the little muscles. You know, that are around the that you can't see, the ones that you know you don't want to be you don't, that you don't really want to be doing. Yeah. You know, nobody nobody enjoys doing them because you can't see the, the progress. Yeah. But you're gonna have a longer career. You know, you're gonna have a, a safer career. You know, no, that's I think that's where a coach comes in and just keeps you in line saying, I know you don't want to do this, but you have to do it. Yeah. And you may not see any benefit throughout your career, yeah. but you just won't get injured. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people see staying healthy and not getting injured as a benefit, yeah. but it really is. Yeah. If you can turn out every week for a whole season, that's a goal in itself, yeah. not getting injured. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to do your you know, your prehab and your injury prevention stuff yeah. to get there. Mm -hmm. And if you skip it, you you know, you won't see a benefit. Mm -hmm. You'll see a loss of missing a couple of games mm -hmm. here and there. And yeah. Kind well, of it, gets, it gets rid of the niggles as well. Yeah. You know, you're trying to bench press and you've got you've got weak you've got weak rotator cuffs and stuff and you start getting a little bit and you start as you as you're lifting up you start to hitch and you know, you get in a bad bad posture again, so it all sort of links into you know, yeah. links into one. Um, have you had any like serious injuries in your career so far? Touch, touch wood, I, I haven't had any major ones. I, 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 when I was younger, I was 16, 16, 17, I snapped my ATFL. Right. Um, the training at college is probably the worst. You know, I've got I've got bad wrists. Everyone's got niggles, you know, fingers have gone and yeah. bad wrists, and you know, neck goes into spasm sometimes. And but but now, other than that, you know, it's feel healthy. I mean we've got a good physio team at, at Sale as well that, yeah. you know, that keep you. I was just going to ask what what things have you found has helped you stay healthy? What do you like to do the most or what don't you like to do the most is probably the best question. Regarding? Uh, like 
injury prevention methods? Injury prevention like, methods. Like where do you get tight in a game the most and what do you do to stop yourself getting tight? Um, my, my back gets gets tight quite a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, the way I run my, my pelvis tilts, so I've been doing a lot of core stability work. Um, my hamstrings because my glutes are weak. Yeah. You know, so a lot of glute work. You know, the things that you don't want to be doing are the, are the ones that are the most important because yeah. they, you know, they've always got sort of, if one something's weak there's always a repercussion you know, with, a, with another muscle. So yeah, it's really, you know, core stability is, is massively important in rugby. Cool, cool, nice one. Uh, well, I think that's, that's all my questions. Yeah. Have you got anything else to add for the, the young guys coming through or? Just, you know, just take on board what, you know, what's been said, you know, not just from me, from all the other, the other, you know, the other coaches, you know, Anthony. Um, you keep training hard and you know hopefully if you've got that goal you'll, you'll, you'll get there. Cool. But just stay away from beach weights. <laughs> cool. So if you've got any questions or comments just drop them below on the blog or on YouTube and either me or maybe Leo get back to you with them. Thanks yeah. for watching. Definitely.